Every single day, millions of computers around the world get infected. Not because people are careless, but because someone, somewhere, is still creating computer viruses. Why? And more importantly, how? This is where things get strange. Because the way viruses are made is nothing like Hollywood movies. It's not a hacker smashing keyboards in a dark room with green code flying on the screen. <laughs> in reality, a computer virus is shockingly simple to make. So simple, in fact, that even a kid with a basic laptop could do it. But before you panic, relax. We're not teaching you to make one. This is only for education, to show how they work, why they spread, and how to protect yourself. And by the end, you'll understand more about viruses than most people who've used computers for decades. Now, here's the paradox. Viruses are deadly to computers, but the first ones weren't even designed to be harmful. Crazy, right? The first virus ever, called Creeper back in the 1970s, didn't steal data. It didn't crash your PC. It just displayed a little message. I'm the Creeper. Catch me if you can. That's it. A digital prank. <laughs> but that prank gave birth to a billion-dollar cybercrime industry. <laughs> so let's reverse engineer the process. If someone today wanted to make a virus, how would they even start? The first ingredient is code. A virus is basically just a small computer program. Instead of running once and then closing, like a calculator app, a virus hides. It attaches itself to another file, like a Word doc or even a game installer. Imagine sticking gum under a chair. That's basically how a virus hides under real programs. But here's the real twist. Viruses don't spread by magic. They need a delivery system. Some use email attachments. Others disguise themselves as downloads. And the scariest ones? They spread automatically across Wi-Fi networks or USB drives, without you even clicking. That's how one of the deadliest viruses, I Love You, in 2000, spread to over 50 million computers because people thought it was just a love letter in their inbox. <laughs> you can probably imagine the chaos. And now your brain's asking, okay, so do virus makers just sit down and write evil code? The truth is yes and no. Modern viruses are rarely built from scratch. Instead, most are mutations, like how flu strains evolve. Hackers take an old virus, tweak the code, and release a variant. That's why antivirus companies are always playing catch-up. Every time one virus is patched, a new mutation is already out there. But here's the darker side. Why would anyone do this? What's the motivation? In the early days, it was mostly bragging rights. Hackers wanted to prove they could outsmart systems. But today, viruses are mostly about money. They can steal credit card info, hijack your PC to mine cryptocurrency, or lock your files and demand ransom. That last one, that's called ransomware, and it's been used to shut down hospitals, banks, even city governments. Imagine trying to run a hospital while all patient files are locked behind a hacker's paywall. That's not just annoying, that's life-threatening. And here's where things get wild. Many viruses aren't even made by individuals anymore. They're part of a black market industry. Entire toolkits exist on the dark web, pre-built virus kits, where someone with zero coding skill can literally just drag and drop to create their own malware. It's malware as a service, like Netflix, but for cyber criminals. <laughs> yeah, that's the world we live in. But remember I said viruses are surprisingly simple? Let's put it in kid language. Imagine you had a robot toy. You could tell it, whenever someone presses this button, instead of dancing, go kick over the Lego tower. That's a virus, a small hidden instruction that makes the computer misbehave. The only difference is computers are so fast and connected that one little instruction can spiral into worldwide chaos. Okay, but here's the catch. Not all viruses are equal. Some are worms. They don't need a host file. They crawl around on their own. Some are Trojans. They look like safe apps, but the second you open them, boom, it's over. 
Some are spyware, silently watching what you type. And some are rootkits so deep in your system that even reinstalling Windows might not kill them. That's like having termites inside your walls, invisible until your house literally collapses. Now let's talk about the psychology. Virus makers exploit human curiosity. That's the real weakness, not the computer. Think about it. You see a file called freecrackedgame.exe. Your brain knows it's sketchy, but curiosity wins. One click and it's over. Or even scarier, viruses that disguise themselves as security updates. Imagine downloading a fix that's actually the infection itself. <sighs> this is why cybersecurity experts always say humans are the weakest link. So here's the big question. Could you accidentally make a virus? Honestly, yes. If you're learning to code, it's not hard to write a simple program that spreads itself. Even a few lines of Python or C++ could technically behave like a virus. But, and this is a huge but, the second you release it, even by mistake, you could be committing a serious crime. Countries treat malware like digital weapons. You wouldn't build a bomb just to see how it works. Same rules here. And this is the part people don't get. Viruses aren't just dangerous because of what they do. They're dangerous because of how fast they scale. One person can write a few lines of code in a bedroom, but the next day, that code could be in a million machines. That's the terrifying power. But here's your relief moment. Viruses are not invincible. In fact, most rely on humans being careless. If you keep your system updated, avoid sketchy downloads, and don't click random email attachments, you've already dodged 90% of threats. And with modern AI-powered antivirus, even new virus strains are caught faster than ever before. So after all this, what's the verdict? Computer viruses are man-made chaos. They're simple, sneaky, and spread because people fall for the trap. They're less like digital magic, more like digital cockroaches. And just like cockroaches, once you know where they hide and how they multiply, they're much easier to avoid. Remember how we started with that first virus, the creeper, that little prank message? Compare that to today's ransomware that locks entire cities. That's the evolution of digital mischief into digital warfare. And the next time someone tells you viruses are too complicated to understand, you'll know the truth. They're simple programs that feed on human mistakes. Protect yourself, stay sharp, and maybe, just maybe, you won't be the next victim.